Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Division C semifinals for the Nexus Gaming Series. Tonight, number two seeded Massive Whiff coming in at six wins, four draws, and a loss. Number three seeded Rush B, five wins, six draws, undominated this season. Joining me, a champion at heart because he is not feeling well, but the show must go on. Linehouse, how you doing, buddy? Uh, I've been better, but I'm excited to watch this matchup. I think these are two really good teams. Yeah, the uh, history uh, between these teams, they played all the way back in week one. And in week one, Rush B put the only loss Massive Whiff has had on them. Now, that's all the way back in week one, though. A lot has certainly changed since then. These two teams finished only one point apart in the standings. And Rush B had the honor of being the only team in C-West without being dominated this series. So this should be a lot of fun. Well, Rush B looks, for all intents and purposes, probably the best team uh, on paper in Division C West. Just the fact that they're just not consistent enough to be the number one seed. So if they're firing all cylinders, I think this team is a force to be reckoned with. And that's why I'm like really fascinated to watch this matchup because I think Massive Whip is also a really good team. So I think this should be a really good matchup overall. You know, if you've been watching the uh, NGS playoffs this season, there have been a lot of upsets. Div C West, one of the divisions where there hasn't been, it's the number one through four seeds who are still uh, left. So number two and three. Winner tonight will face the Guys Gems Team Awesome Sauce winner. Uh, they play tomorrow. So you are the Div C writer. Anything we should look for with these teams going at it? Uh, well, the big thing is both these teams are actually like high up on the KDA for C West. Rush B is number one with 4.7 and Massive Whiff's number two at 3.7. And that should says a lot right there to me. It's one whole <laughs> number differential between the top two. And yet, they're both really strong in making sure that they don't die and they get kills when they need to. Because if you look at takedowns, Massive Withs number one at 14.4, and Rush B is actually six, I believe, at 11.9. So these teams are really good at making sure to get the kills that they need when they need it and dying as a result from overextending or anything. So That's what I'm going to be looking for. Both teams are. We're going to hit the start game button and jump into Infernal Shrines here for game number one. <clears throat> Just so uh, you know, first uh, Massive Whiff is the higher seed. Got to choose between map choice and first pick. They did take map choice. Rush B banned Volskaya Foundry, Massive Whiff banned Cursed Hollow, Map 1 Selection, Infernal Shrines by Massive Whiff, and the loser of this game will get the choice of first pick in Game 2 or Map Choice in Game 2. So first pick, first ban for Rush B. What are they looking at, Linehouse? <sighs> I have I don't know. On Furl Shrines, I really feel like being able to control the objective is the most important aspect of the map. So if I'm uh, Rush B, I'm looking to choke out somebody that I think Massive With either really likes. So maybe I don't know if we, I don't know if anybody's going to be playing Stukov anymore because I don't I don't think he's the best healer here. I I just don't even know. Um, that actually makes sense now that I think about it because that is Massive With's number one tank that they use. So scouting done here uh, by both squads, I'm sure, with all the VODs, the casts, the stats of the storm, all the tools available for both teams, uh, not to mention playing each other. In the playoffs here, um, if you've shown something the other team is aware of it, the only way to really surprise them is to actually pull out a pocket strat that you haven't really shown so far this season. So I'm sure these uh, first game especially, you're going to see targeted bans at the other team's priority picks. As it should be at this point in the season. Yeah, Gotta for take sure. away the comfort picks. For sure. Now, speaking of Stukov, though, a balance patch went through today that actually brought his healing back up a little bit. It did increase his Q tick healing a small amount and did increase, increase his uh, trait proc healing as well. 
Um, mm-hmm. Stukov's still going to be good with that big AoE silence. It's so oppressive. So we might see him with that little uptick of healing that it gave him. Maybe it'll bring him right back to the forefront as a Varian band comes out for massive whiff. Yeah, it, that could be a useful one for Stukov. I actually haven't had the pleasure of uh, trying him out since the pa- uh, patch update. I did try out Ariel, and she still seems fine, even though she got nerfed a little bit. So, But, I mean, that's... Any kind of additional healing for Stukov is good because his silence is so good on certain maps, like particularly this one. Yeah, for sure. And actually, since we're talking about it, uh, a little bit of a tough day for teams to play in a playoff game with a fairly sizable balance patch today. Lots of number tweaks, t- armor being taken off of heroes, particularly tanks. Um, even the XP rewards for the structures throughout the maps was retooled a little bit. Uh, both teams will have to deal with it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that affects the game. Kael'thas first picked uh, for the side of Rush B. Kael'thas is really good on shrines, but you really don't see very much first pick Kael'thas anymore. Yeah, first pick is interesting. Although maybe there's something that they've seen from Massive Whip that tells them that they need to take him now if they want him. Maybe that, that is really good shrine control and with a ma- mage, and they're just taking care of it right away. And maybe they just have a hell of a Kael'thas player. <laughs> That's also possible. These teams like to kill people, so I could see that being a key character for them. So two picks now for the side of Massive Whiff. Um, I'd like to see either a tank or a support and maybe a backliner. You don't really want to show all your upfront damage uh, right here so early in the draft. Cool. That's a good response to KT. And Johanna. The Gul'dan-Johanna combination is so strong in the four-man rotation. There's actually um, very few heroes that can keep up with that. I mean, you clear and rotate so fast with the Johanna Gul'dan. Both of those heroes, good right now generally, but even better on Infernal Shrines. And Johanna's clear with her uh, Condemn is just so useful, particularly to zone people away from the shrine itself and still get clears on the uh, minions as, as well. And a side note, maybe a, a result of the balance patch today, Johanna actually might be a little stronger into Kael'thas after the patch today. She lost her physical armor, which J- Kael'thas didn't care about, but gained some health. So uh, interesting to see how that dynamic goes with the Kael'thas. Two picks coming up for Rush B here. Yeah, I'm always fascinated with those patches. I feel like the health they give them is not equal to the armor they lose. <laughs> so It's always like less. So, oh, okay. Alex draws a, that's, I like that pick. I think she's the best healer on this map. It's just that she's really hard to pick early on. Yeah, the Dragon Queen into the objective is really powerful. Uh, her percentage-based healing with the Diablo, who just got a buff today, some extra mm-hmm. health, some extra damage. Uh, so uh, Dibble's right back in the meta in the first game we've seen so far, pairing really well with Alex draws. I like both of those picks by Rush B. Particularly if she goes to Globe uh, Talent Level 1, when she completes that, that means her W will always have a Globe drop afterwards, and then that's extra healing for Diablo if he goes um, Devil's Dew. At Level 1, yeah. that's And the uh, Devil's Dew, those Globes heal him for so much when he's at full souls. That's a pretty big deal. And then they do ban the Malfeel, uh, one of the better solo laners, especially into melee. I wonder... Uh, but he's also kind of a soft counter to Diablo. I wonder if they just don't really have a mouthfeel player and don't want to see him. It could be, or maybe they know what they're taking the next two slots, or maybe or the third slot, and they know they don't want to have to deal with him in the solo lane, and they're taking maybe... Forget if he can beat Sonya in the solo lane. Uh, my understanding is equal skill, basically any melee hero mouthfeel does at least even into. It's the ranged poke solo laners that give them a little bit more of a hard time mm-hmm. maybe they're just saying you know what we want to take the stronger solo laner and we're just going to eliminate the good counter yeah for sure that's definitely a possibility as well uh ban, ban here for rush b they're taking it down to the wire about eight seconds before we're going to see who their ban is uh, could be a support or a backliner or an offlane and it is stukov so not wanting to deal uh, with the stukov coming out uh, from the side of Massive Whiff. And that's a good ban, I feel, because now you're saying, like, what support are you really going to use on this map that is really good on the shrine itself? And to me, the only other ones I can think of are Ariel 
and uh, maybe Malfurion, but I don't see anything that pairs well with him right now. Unless the fact that you want to put the root behind Diablo when he charges in, so they can't engage as efficiently as they like. Yeah, the only supports left that are really going to offer any, anything in the form of Shrine Clear are going to be an Ariel and maybe like a Rhaegar with the Lightning Shield. But other than that, there's really no supports left that are going to offer yeah. Shrine Clear right now. Actually, Rhaegar is a good point. Oh, Deckard. So That's Deck true, actually. He's I not forget about Deckard. Yeah, he's not going to offer any Shrine Clear, but he offers huge zoning tools. Uh, in mm -hmm. the battles over the shrines, and Sonya will, of course, be in the solo top lane. Massive Whiff leaving their last damage dealer as a kind of a flex pick on the backside. And now the last two picks for the side of Rush B. We're going to see their offlaner and likely another damage dealer or something sneaky, a little pot pocket strat that we've seen teams kind of uh, whipping out this week as they try to get the advantage on their playoff opposition. I'm wondering if they're going to go my F. That would be a, well with the Diablo and the Alex Straza and Kael'thas. Yeah, and that would be a lot of CC too. Uh, Johanna does do well into the Maev though. If you time her shield glare, you can actually cancel the uh, tether by the Maev because uh, she has to hit her auto attack to proc the tether. Uh, mm -hmm. And Johanna with the Iron Skin too can kind of walk out of all that stuff. So. Um, that is something to consider. They do go with the Lunara Ooh. Tyriel. So Tyriel's going to be in the off lane. We'll lose that to Sonya. Uh, Deckard, though, I think is going to have a hard time keeping up with Lunara Kael'thas. That's a high-volume damage backline. Yeah, it is. That's a lot of poison and healing that they're gonna, they're going to take care of with just potions. You know, and in the Diablo rework, he doesn't bust tanks quite like he used to, but he still, if you go the kind of old school damage on the Q, reset on the E, damage on the Q, he still completely wrecks any backliners he gets a hold of. So something to keep in mind with the Diablo on the battlefield. Yeah, and with just Johanna, I know Sonya is a, considered a bruiser, but she doesn't really have any strong peel other than her spear, maybe. Um... They need to have really Johanna to protect the backline of Gul'dan, Deckard, and whoever they take right here. Yeah, what Sonya offers to her own backline is she pressures the opposition's backline so much they can't stay close enough to do their damage. So yep. we'll see how this goes. Last pick is going to be a Genji. Interesting. So no point-and-click stuns from the side of Rush B. Uh, if Zayn gets on the backside there, this could be a world of hurt for Kael'thas and Lunara. Yeah, the only person they have to deal with Genji is Diablo, and I don't think he's going to want to hold his Q for that every single time. All right. So, Linehouse, who won the draft? No pressure or anything. Oh, honestly, I kind of... I don't I like both of them for very different reasons. So, I would just say... I'm going to go with uh, Rush B. Uh, I think they have really good Shrine Control overall. And while I do think uh, Massive Whiff has a better team fight, when knowing, taking into account that both these teams are already pretty good at team fighting, so I'm trusting the fact that Rush B knows how to still team fight properly with this comp, even though it's into a Genji, and able to take and control the Shrines on the most part throughout, throughout the match. Yeah, I think this game is really going to come down to um, this game is going to come down to can Genji and uh, Sonya put enough pressure on that back line of Rush B that they're not able to put the damage where it needs to go. Um, that's going to be a big question. Yep. So just uh, wrapping up some little back end stuff here, and then we will. Get this show on the road. I got spoiled yesterday. We actually had a producer to do all this stuff, and I just got to cast and talk video games. <laughs> that was great to have one of these guys on the backside doing all this stuff. Who was, a, who was your producer yesterday? It was uh, Falandrith, the same guy that does the uh, um, Stats of the Storm. And oh, he, nice. uh, he's not able to stream right now, so he's been doing some producing on the backside. Um, and he did a great job of observing and producing for Murda, and I, and I was fantastic. 
All right, so here we go. Game one on Infernal Shrines. We have the blue team, Massive Whiff with Zane KT on Genji, Zanzibar on Johanna, Ruben Ripper on Deck Deckard Kane, K Shizzle on Gul'dan, and Kaina on the Sonya. And for Rush B, we've got Dominator on Lenara, Greenwall 12 on Tyrael, T Lane on Kael'thas, Great Poto on Alex Straza, and Fatlock 333 on Diablo. And they are not even interested at all in fighting the mid. Nope. Nobody wants to seem to have any part of this. In fact, Rush B already has their laners in place. Deckard has his potions out mid, but really not much going on. So some damage thrown out, but really much to do about nothing there. And it will be Lunara actually squaring off in the top lane against Sonya. That's not a matchup you're going to see a whole lot. Um, normally you'd send Tyrael up there, but Tyrael would get wrecked by Sonya. Lunara is poking out Kaina big time, and in the first minute or so is actually winning this lane. I actually think Lunara might win this matchup if they're played correctly. Of course. Now, I mean, once Sonya, if, if Sonya lands one Q on Lunara, she's, she's hurting. Yep. But if, if, they're, if they're not, they don't play close enough to get that Q landed on them, they should be able to win that fairly effectively. Uh, game volume coming in a little low for a minute. I'm going to turn that up a little bit. Still coming in low. That's so annoying. <laughs> well, so far, oh, it looks like Massive Whistle already taken the camp on the, the siege camp on the left. Yeah, but so Sonya was winning the lane so hard, she, Gul'dan and Sonya actually swapped out. Now, part of that Sonya is going to go to Merc, of course, but Gul'dan actually might lane into that Lunara a little bit better than the uh, Sonya will. Yeah, I agree. And it looks like Sonya's having a hard time taking this camp because of how much damage Lunara did to her early on. Yeah, I don't know that she's going to do it. She has to back off, and that's going to be a yep. full leash. That's a And that Gul'dan might be going down top. Oh. That's a pretty big deal by Massive Whiff there, uh, having to seed all of that time and soak, loft in the, soak lost in the top lane. Mm -hmm. First blood, Fatlock picking up the kill on Gul'dan. Uh, Rush B kind of uh, went in the early game here a little bit the first couple minutes. Yeah, they're almost a full level lead in XP so far as well, and they didn't even take any camps. So it looks like both teams have kind of uh, passed on the rotations, the four-man rotations, and have kind of settled into like a 1-3-1 one, one type of deal. Um, and Massive Whiff, that's kind of too bad for them because with the Johanna Gul'dan, they really had a beautiful four-man. A little mini invade here, but mm -hmm. Fatlock keeping Diablo away, and Tyrael's coming to reinforce, and nothing more is really going to get done. Body blocking by Diablo to hold Johanna there, but she's not really going to care about that. Nope. And with uh, almost a full, was it a half level lead right now going into the first shrine and having Alex Straza, I kind of expect Russ B to take this first shrine. So Sonya is able to capture that Merc on the second attempt here. Not going to get as much value because uh, Rush B is already up here. They can go into lane and clear it when they need to. Genji a little late on the rotation, so numbers advantage here for Rush B. And it looks like Lunara is there just to poke the back line and harass. And Genji is kind of flirting down there in the minion wave, so they have to watch out for him coming from behind. So both teams poking out. No one really hard engaging. Zane is putting a lot of pressure on that Lunara, though. Shrine Guardian's very close, 26 to 22. The lane is now cleared out, so free push mid for Rush B. Dragon Queen has been procced. Now Rush B going in card. Kaina and Johanna forced to retreat. Genji still on the point, dashes away. 32 to 32. Uh, looks like Rush B will take the short term advantage here and likely capturing the first objective, sitting at 39. And there's oh. 40, securing the Frozen Punisher. Great timing on the Dragon Queen by Great Potu. 
Is that how we're saying that? Great Potu? I, I, I have no idea. <laughs> Pudu. <laughs> I'm wondering if it's a Star Wars reference. Maybe. Uh, and in the meantime, the mid lane was being pushed out by the Siege camp as well. So good early game value here. Front wall going down. That's about what you expect out of the first Punisher. Uh, now Rush B looking for more as John Cena is just now entering his death throes. Yep. Tyriel trying to get the well before he will teleport away, but he's taking a lot of damage. Kael'thas Q able to finish the job. Kael'thas taking a lot of poke from the uh, Gul'dan, however. Diablo doing a nice job of peeling, keeping Massive Whiff away, and everybody from the side of Rush B retreats bruised, but otherwise okay. Yep, and failing very victorious to have gotten that well and the front wall completely with the first push. You know, despite how much uh, you watch this game, it looks like Rush B taking it. They're really not up by as far as you would think. They won the first objective. They um, secured some free push in the mid. Uh, only up by about, I don't know, a quarter level or so, it looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I mean, they've only had there's only one kill so far this game, and I do feel Massive Whiff is ca keeping up with the XP by collecting camps because they've gotten three so far to zero on uh, Rush B. So a little four-on-four four here in the bottom lane. Uh, Diablo did take Devil's Due, and did she take the Globe Talent? Yes, yeah, she did. Uh, she did one. take the Globe Talent. So nice synergy uh, going to be late game there for Alex and Diablo. Uh, once, and she's uh, already at 13 of 20, so, or is it 25? It's 25. So she's yeah. well on her way to completing it. Once that circle of life quest is finished, Diablo is going to have incredible sustain. He's going to have percentage-based healing and the increased globe healing as well. <clears throat> Another unusual square off in the top lane. It's actually Tyriel and Gul'dan. Gul'dan, I think, will win that. However, Tyriel should bully him off of the globes and might be able to double globe up there to keep himself in a better situation than he would otherwise. Yeah, they keep switching up their lane situation. Like, Tyrael's top now, Lenar's bottom, and then they have the three middle. It's just, it's kind of fascinating how they keep... <laughs> they I think really it's just kind of, system. whoever's in the neighborhood, go ahead and grab the lane for us. Oh, that clear from Kael'thas is just so good right now. Yeah, for sure, and the level 10 heroic abilities are very close for Rush B. They are picking up their siege camp one more time. Gul'dan rotating for Sonya, and then he changed his mind. So it looks like Sonya and Gul'dan will pick up the top lane. Heroics are here. Sanctification. <clears throat> Cleansing Flame. It is going to be Apocalypse, not the new Lightning Breath, which is unbanned with the hotfix today. Thornwood Vine and uh, Phoenix for Kael'thas. Uh, I'm always happy to see Phoenix instead of Pyroblast. Especially <clears throat> on a map like this where the control is so much more important. You know, the poke from Lunara is going to be very real. However, Leaping Strike might have given her the mobility to help deal with the Genji. So I'm curious to see how that heroic heroic selection uh, from Dominator on Lunara turns out. If Genji starts wrecking her on the back line, you got to wonder if she's not going to get more value out of the Leaping Strike. Sonya going very deep, gets yep. charged, flipped, charged, Living Bomb running. Sonya is going to... You gonna die? There's no, the potion. the potion is there. Nice job on the potion. Still very low. The health bars from Rush B much higher. Now Sonya's in trouble, and there is uh, Dragon Queen. Sonya does go down this time. Second kill of the game, and Massive Whiff is running as Dominator on the Lunara picks up the second kill uh, this of this team fight. This time on the Gul'dan. And it looks like she's gonna go top to clear that wave. And they're just really controlling and dominating on this point for the objective every single time. Yeah, I don't, even, I don't even, it doesn't even look like Massive Whiff has much of a chance on it. And that's yeah, whatever Rush B chooses to give them. For sure. You really can't, uh, Genjo there eating John Cena, uh, you really have to pick your spots when you're going to fight into Dragon Queen and Great Putu. And by the way, thank you for IDK Shrubs. He wikied it for us. It's actually a bird from South America, Great Putu. Um, oh, nice. I think is how we're saying that. Uh, <laughs> but he is timing those Dragon Queens perfectly, right kind of toward the middle slash back half of those objectives. Um, he's timing it out so the Dragon Queen will finish the objective. Yep. So that, that means if they don't want to surrender it, they have to fight into it, and that's just not a fight you want to take. 
No, it really isn't. When uh, when she's in her Dragon Queen form, it's basically it's almost basically the best hero in the game, arguably. Yeah, it's, it's it kind of like Ragnaros in that. Sonya may be in trouble there. Kind of like Ragnaros in his Molten Core almost has two heroics. You could kind right. of say the same thing for Alexstrasza. Yep. Sonya in trouble one more time. Stunned, flipped, oh. stunned again, and down goes Sonya. So four unanswered kills, a full level lead. They're going to use this level 13 talent advantage, and they are going to take the siege camp here from Massive Whiff. And that was well executed. Very good job staggering their different uh, interrupts and stuns to ensure that Sonya could not get away. Did Sonya go? She still went Wrath of the Berserker. And Johanna still has yet to pick her level 10. So it is Lornado from Deckard Kane, Dragonblade from Genji, Wrath of the Berserker from Sonya. Horrify, of course, because he only has one heroic from Gul'dan. Johanna uh, currently maybe going Falling Sword, what? but I think we're going to see Blessed Shield. Okay. I mean, I wonder if Maya was just delayed, because it looked like she hadn't picked oh. a talent since level 1. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, no, mine said she has, and it is... I was wrong. It is Falling Sword. Johanna opting to go Falling Sword. I play a lot of Johanna, and most of the time I don't like that talent um, because she has to leave the front line to do it. You're just completely exposing your backside on this side, um, exposing Gul'dan to a Diablo and a Tyrael. Uh, Blessed Shield gives her more engage and peel. The only time I really, really like Blessed Shield is if you're going full dive, and that allows Johanna to dive with her teammates. Um, so unless she's going to dive with a Genji, I, I'm curious how much value Johanna's going to get out of that Falling Sword. And that's what I, I'm thinking that must be the plan. It has to be the plan that she's going to jump in with the Genji. Or maybe they just feel like how the game's gone so far that they can't get in through conventional ways, and they got to get in through the sky. I mean, <laughs> maybe, but if she... if if uh, Johanna goes Falling Sword, who's keeping Diablo off of Gul'dan? And, you know, unless he's going to use the Horrify as a self-peel. Uh, there yeah. goes uh, Deckard Kane in a lot of trouble. The Bush Party uh, was Ooh. successful. Um, that old man is surprisingly hard to bring down, though. Falling Sword goes right into Sanctification. Uh, Tyrael getting a lot of value, however, kind of deep in the back line. Kael'thas running for his life. Holy Ground is appeal, keeps both Dominator and Kael'thas alive. And in the end, only the old man goes down. A couple of near kills for Massive Whiff, but just unable to finish the job. They are re-engaging Gul'dan, actually able to pick Lunara off in on the backside there. So this turns into a one-for-one one and forces Rush B to withdraw. Yeah, I feel uh, Dominator got a little greedy there. He went after the Gul'dan. Did he, I couldn't tell if he went underneath the tower. I wasn't watching specifically. But there was no minions there. So he had nothing to defend him, help, help him with it. And he also didn't have his team. They were clearly trying to get the, uh, get the camp. So both teams here already fighting for this objective. Uh, I like the decision by Massive Whiff to take this engagement. They want the engagement before Rush B hits 16, which is right around the corner. Uh, by the way, in that team fight, Lunara may not have been in much, in as much trouble with the Leaping Strike. So um, let's, let's see how uh, that plays out there. Johanna is taking a lot of poke, though. Waiting for, and Gul'dan now in trouble. I don't see how he gets out. He does fall. Once the Grand Gate Potu with the Dragon Queen getting a ton of value. Sonya in trouble. Holy grounded. Isolated. Down she goes. Two kills for none. And that's got to feel bad for Rush B. They were actually at 32 Shrine Guardians and couldn't finish the job. Third straight Punisher taken by Rush B. Yeah, that's like that's the funny thing about it. It's like Rush B was like, you guys can get as many as you want, but when we really want to take the objective, we will come in and take the objective, and there's nothing you can do about it. And in all three of those instances, it's as soon as Dragon Queen comes up, it's over. The fight for, fight is over. The fight for the objective is over. Um, I'm not sure what adjustment here Massive Whiff has to make, you know, get it faster, I guess. Um, maybe force them to try to use Dragon Queen more defensively instead of as a tool to actually secure, um, you know, secure the objective. A little That'd late be the only thing I can think of. They have to dive in there and get Alex Straza and force her either to fly away in Cleansing Frame, Flame or take the Dragon Queen form. 
because they just can't sit back and let them wait for them to come to them. It's not working. So Rush B does combine the Siege Giant with uh, John Cena, and now they're finally able to take the Bruisers that they were posturing so hard for a few minutes ago, leveraging Talent 16 into a free Bruiser camp. And now they're going to, I like this, they're going to rotate up. This top fort should be free if they want it. And they're hovering in the neighborhood, going to clear out the minion waves, and now they are advancing towards top fort. Are they just, I'm, just, I'm just looking at the map, and they just control so much of it, except maybe arguably bottom lane's pushed out pretty far right now. And they keep getting the camps, massive whiff, but I feel like they're just not really getting good value out of them this match. I mean, seven kills to one, three objectives to zero. There's no other way this game is, um, is going to be with those things in mind. Rush B has really been in command from minute one. Uh, Massive Whiff is able to steal the uh, mid-siege camp, knowing that Rush B was in the top lane. So small victory there. Zanzibar anchoring in the bush, making sure his team is not caught unawares. Gul'dan is in the top, though, so Massive Whiff wisely backing up. They don't want any part of this uh, as a 5-on-4, of course. And Rush B has done, done a great job this entire game rotating to make sure that these camps don't get that good value for what Massive Whiff wants to do, and they make sure that Massive Whiff is always on their toes and trying to figure out where the team is actually. Because, like, right, look right here. They want to go to the bush for the, uh, for the camp, but see, look at the route Rush B's taking. They won't even let them do that. Great sanctification to eat the initial initiation. Uh, Cleansing Flame used early to keep Genji off of Kael'thas and keep Kael'thas alive. Genji forced to withdraw. This is the first even talent tier fight that Massive Whiff has had in a while. However, between the Cleansing Flame and the Sanctification, literally every member of Rush B was at full health until that corruption. Same could not be said for Massive Whiff. So much sustain and shielding on the side of Rush B. Massive Whiff has just had... Uh, a hell of a time burning through that. Yeah, they can't they can't do anything meaningful damage wise to Rush B. I mean, t technically, what? Who walked into that? Was it Kael'thas? And he still walked away. Well, they they kind of went in split. Tyrael went in on the left. Horrify coming out, not getting a whole lot of value. Yeah. The Lornado actually pushed the Horrify victims the other direction. Um, right. Tyrael went in what? on the left, and Kael'thas went in on the right. Everybody that was with Tyrael was fine because they initiated straight into a sanctification. But it seemed like Massive Whiff kind of went two different directions just as Rush B was coming in from two different directions. Some of them went left onto the Tyrael side, and it looked like only Genji went right onto the Kael'thas side. Maybe if they all went onto the Kael'thas instead of the Tyrael, um, maybe they pick up the kill because uh, Cleansing Flame is not that fast. Yeah. I do like that Rush B went and grabbed that camp real quick. Create some extra pressure in the middle, although I wish they had uh, cleaned up the lane a bit more because those are now just going to walk right into the fort or keep. But um, like they they know. like look, They have 26, and they still feel very confident that they can might be able to finish this off and get it before mashup with. Now, we did say they want Dragon Queen popped early. It is popped earlier. However, that's not going to matter. Look uh, at they the had low to pop it health bars. Way behind. Yeah, and, and uh, Massive Whiff choosing to stand here, knowing they're going to sacrifice members. They feel like they've just invested too much time into getting this objective. They're at 36, desperately trying to get four more. Johanna is 37, 38. Johanna needs two more. Falling Sword to secure the objective, and she does do it. If Massive Whiff had not secured that objective, that would have been game-breaking. Uh, they I mean, do you do you think that was worth it? They're all dead. I don't. Like, I think it. Rush B is gonna. I mean, core. This is a yeah, gonna core get a, call. They're gonna keep in core, maybe. I don't think that was worth it. I don't either. I, I I know what their thinking was, which is we've already invested so much time and abilities in here. We can't just let them waltz in and keep it. But um, are they gonna core? Or are they gonna double keep? It looks like uh, they're double gonna keep double keep. Safer. Yeah. Gul'dan is up, Sonya is up, Genji going to be up very soon. I mean, they literally just completely ignored the Punisher pushing down the top lane. And it's, I mean, that was the call. It's not even going to get wall, I don't think. Um, are they even going to defend it, or are they just going <laughs> to rip the, uh, they are going yeah, back to defend. defend it. So finally, Rush B, 
Yeah, finally rush B. Yeah, I, I think I would have ignored it at this point. It's not going to do anything. Oh, Dominator. Oh, my goodness. John Cena. MVP John Cena. Do not underestimate the damage on those laser beams, especially this late in the game. They hurt bad. Uh, and John Cena now has as many kills as Massive Whiff throughout the match, I believe. And that right there is Infernal Shrines 101, why you do not let the backliners catch John Cena. <laughs> Uh, it's something actually uh, my team and I really focused in a lot on was not only making sure somebody catches the Punisher who can catch him, but getting the timing down. It was like my biggest pet peeve was we should never eat more. more no, no Punisher should ever hit more than one of us in a stun. We want to learn the timing so we spread out and only one person ever eats the stun. Because uh, if you hit two, three people I like this, they know Lunara's down, collapsing in. However, they are now safely within keep range. Uh, trying to siege with the Merc camp. This might be the best opportunity they have, but with Lunara up in two seconds, there's just not a lot here on the battlefield for Massive Whiff to take. That was some really good map awareness by Rush B. They, they knew when they were coming, and they got back just in time. So, I mean, patience is really the name of the game here for Rush B. They have two lanes pushing out Katas. They never have... If they play this right, there is never a time in the rest of this game where they should be fighting five on five. They can literally wait out lanes, and when someone goes back to clear, you take the five on four. Yep. And that's why I, I, feel, I still feel like that was a mistake to go back. They, they gave up the camp in the upper left to Massive Whiff when they easily could have gotten it. And then they also lost the Nara trying to protect the the, the uh, keep from the objective. And I don't, I don't know. Like I feel like that was just a bad call. They should have kept the pressure up at that point. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, they weren't going to get much more than the camp. It really would have been a denial at that point. You're just taking the camp to keep it from massive whiff. It's not going to do anything. All five members would have just cleared it. Um, right. But that top lane would have been more pushed out than it is right now. And you can just look at the mini map. Top and mid are piling up fast. I mean, this top wave has three katas in it. The mid wave has two. Um, mm -hmm. In about 15, 20 seconds here, Massive Whiff is going to have to retreat and deal with that. And if I'm Rush B, I'm trying to make sure they don't back up and retreat to do that. Yeah, Tyrael's pretty good at that too. Yeah, you know, keeping them from her thing. Um, what I'd like to see them do, looks like they're going to try for the outer wall here or a party bush uh, using that new and improved wisp. I love the changes on the Nara on the wisp. I wanted to see them rotate up, get that C or the bruiser camp in the top lane and time that out with the objective. Uh, more push, more pressure, more pressure. Wow. And Dominator's getting ch chunked by Gul'dan right now. And... That damage from Gul'dan is getting up there from the corruption. Yeah, he has I mean, to watch out because he lost like what seventy five percent health in one, one yeah, go. Yeah, he has completed his corruption build, uh, and he has hunger for power as well. So uh, he can definitely do uh, a lot of damage uh, to you know either the Lunara or the Kalthos if he hits him with the full corruption. They're going to be in a world of hurt. But you can see it right now. Gul'dan is not here. There goes the falling sword onto. Uh, Tyrael and Kael'thas. Kael'thas has popped his shield, and it literally accomplished basically nothing. Nothing happened yeah. out of that. And she had to immediately back away because the rest of the team didn't come. That was weird. So cleansing flame down right into the Dragon Queen, and once again, massive whiff. Well, he uh, took the upgraded ult for the cleansing flame, so he hit enough people to come back down as a Dragon Queen. So she, they still have another Dragon Queen to use after this. Yeah, this is 100% this objective secured. Uh, top lane is pushing out hard. I have a hard time not seeing this is gotta Rush be B and here. This is a minute 23. Oh, there's the stun onto the Sonya. Double stun, and then John Cena flying in from the top rope, polishing off the Sonya. This, is, this would have to be like the most epic of epic defenses for this yep. not to be game a minute. And I'm fairly certain they have Dragon Queen to go on this if they want to. Yeah, they've got two Katas mid, one more coming down top, a minute 23 Punisher, all five members up. Johanna does land the Falling Sword on yep, three. there's Dragon Queen. Sanctification, Falling Sword, Gul'dan goes down fast. And by the way, that what exactly happened there was my issue with Falling Sword. Johanna went up in the air, and Diablo literally just went on Gul'dan and killed him. There was nobody there to protect poor Gul'dan. 
Yeah, and that was a really dominating performance from Rush B. They played the map objective perfectly, and they did really well in their team fights. They didn't let really massive with get do anything that they wanted to do that that game. So game one, going over to Rush B in dominant style, really. They controlled that game cover to cover. Um, there was just really wasn't much of a doubt throughout um, throughout that game. And only two deaths, both to Lenara, and one of them was to John Cena. So really, Whiff only got one real kill that game. Yeah, um, I mean, I mean that's rough. That was a. What's the what do you, what do you change in your draft strategy if you're massive whiff? I mean, it kind of, it kind of depends on what map they go. And I I would say they they wanted to team fight, and it wasn't working with this particular comp into what Rush B had. But part of that was because Rush B kept taking the objectives, and so they had an XP lead, and they were just harder to kill at that point. To me, if, let's see, Massive Whiff has choice again, I don't know. I don't know if they take the first pick or the map, but if I'm taking map, I don't think you take an objective-based map unless you have a really solid strategy for it this time. Or you ban out Alex Straza, because that's what I was going to say. If you have another map where Alex Straza excels, great Putu, Potu, on Alex Straza I, was, the, was the MVP of that match. Everything she did was timed out perfectly. Um, T-Lane was caught a couple times under a lot of pressure. Alex Straza always there to bail him out. So if they take another map where Alex Straza excels, um, I think it's got to be an Alex Straza ban. Yeah, I agree with that. Or find out or make a better comp to dive her because that is what she's technically weaker to. Like, I, I, I'm kind of like thinking... What would have been better than Genji? Because I don't, I don't feel like he worked that well for what they were trying to do in the end. Yeah, it's like he didn't really have a, a dive partner. Um, Deckard can't support the divers with healing anyway. I mean, he can kind of create engagement zones. Um, you know, like, I don't know, maybe like a D-Shield Uther would have been better for that. You know, and mm. they went Falling Sword, too. And if you're going to go Falling Sword, do you go full into it? You go Leap Sonya, Falling Sword, Genji? I mean, there at least you have yeah, something that, you know, seems to be on the same page. It's just they, the, the team dynamic within that composition didn't quite um, seem to be on the same page, it felt like. Well, that's why I was surprised with that um, Sonya went Berserker. It's like I felt their comp was screaming for her to go Leap. So that you, you can get in there, particularly when they take Falling Sword. You can leap in there to end Falling Sword, and then Genji and Gul'dan can just have a field day on hopefully multiple stunned heroes. Uh, so I I don't know, maybe they just had a different something planned, something different in mind for their opportunities based on the talents they picked. Maybe. Uh, side note, Grendel, uh, you're my hero, my friend. Thanks for the sub. Uh, you're the first one other than my brother, so that makes you family now. Uh, thanks again. Uh, map two pick uh, coming out for Rush B. Massive Whiff chose first pick. So we're waiting to hear from Dominator on which map Rush B would like to go to game two. What do the stats say? What is Rush B's go to map to advance to the C West finals, Linehouse? Uh, unfortunately, I do not know because I don't have that up on here. Oh, right. And actually. Yeah, rip, and also I have to walk away for a second, so I apologize, and I'll be back as soon as I can. <laughs> it's all good. Linehouse is a champion. I mentioned he's under the weather, so he's uh, sticking with us here. Thanks to him for sure, because I know that's a, a rough thing to do. Like I mentioned, we are waiting for Dominator to, <laughs> um, to choose map. It won't be Volskaya, as that was banned out, and it won't be Cursed Hollow, because that also was banned out. Huh, so much to talk about that game. I mean, it was really uh it was really Rush B's game from pretty much cover to cover, the kills, the control of the map. 
and it just felt like uh, Massive Whiff didn't have an answer. And it looks like we are going to Sky Temple. So Sky Temple for game two. It will be Massive Whiff trying to force a pivotal winner-take-all game three and Rush B trying to close out the series and advance to the Div C West Finals. And once again, they will play the winner of Guys, Gems, and Team Awesome Sauce, which will be on Swing's stream tomorrow night. So if you want to see how Div C West plays out after this set, that will be the place to go. So Massive Whiff in Game 1 opted to choose the map. This time they opted to change it up and take first pick. So I assume we're going to see um, maybe a shift in their drafting strategy. Um, Diablo was very effective, as was Alex Straza, of course. Um, I imagine we're going to see uh, some kind of targeted ban after uh, that Game 1. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. No, it's all good. How you feeling, buddy? I'm all right. <clears throat> so, where are we going? Where do we go? Sky Temple? Okay. <laughs> and who picked this map? This was the selection of Rush B and IDK Shrubs going in with the knowledge one more time. According to him, this map would have been Cursed Hollow if it wasn't banned out by Massive Whiff. So instead, uh, we go <laughs> we go to Sky Temple here. So just waiting for uh, both teams to get in here. We will have the R's up in a moment. It's an interesting choice. This is not, this is a little bit different than a, than, I don't know. I feel like it's a different point control map compared to what um, they just did on for all shrines, but they... you know, but it's a fairly large three lane map with objectives that have long drawn out fights over a circular point. So I mean, uh, if you want to have that kind of dynamic that worked out so well for you in game one, I could see how you could go Sky Temple. Mm -hmm. I wish I could get the um, stats to come up for these teams. I've been having issues with the uh, stats of the storm lately, unfortunately. All right, I have gotten the R's from both teams. Sky Temple, game two. We are underway. So in game two, it will be massive whiff with the first ban. Do they ban Diablo? Do they ban Alex Straza? Do they ban somebody else? That's what I've been trying to figure out. I don't know if Alex Straza is that this map. So I don't know if you're as as fearful of her as maybe they should be, or at least it was, should have been last game. Right. I would, honestly, if you're not taking them, I would probably consider banning Blaze if someone uses him because he's really good at maintaining one of the lanes uh, for control, particularly since he's a great solo laner or solo lane bruiser that can engage and stun. I'm a, I'm a little surprised. Typically, in my experience in these games, the game two first ban is pretty lickety split. You do have time between games. Usually, that's one of the first things a team discusses. Uh, however, Massive Whiff still talking it over. And let's see. Who is it going to be? First ban from Massive Whiff is Diablo. So not, oh, not surprising. He did uh, wreak a little havoc on the back line that first game. Totally understandable. Now Rush B gonna, with their first ban. Are they going to ban ETC again? That seemed to work pretty well. Yeah, um, especially if they know that's a comfort pick and there wasn't anything um, that that they really felt was deserving of a first ban that they saw in game one. If they know ETC is a comfort pick from Massive Whiff, that would be the direction to go, and it is. That is the direction they go. So 
first pick for Massive Whiff. Uh, let's see what they're going to do here. Uh, tank might not be a bad idea as there's already a little bit of a choke going on with the Dibbles ETC ban. Do we get a garage here coming out early? He did have a little bit of a nerf to his cooldowns today, so that might keep some people off of him. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if uh, their main tank guy plays garage. I don't think the stats show that he does that. I think Johanna's the next tank that he they play so i think that might be why we saw her last game it might i don't i mean because like when i looked at massive whiff that was the one thing i did see is that basically it's it's etc and it's etc as the tank that they use and after that they really don't use other tanks well that makes sense why we're seeing the etc bands and it's going to go with the dahaka i like that pick he's solid in the uh, solo lane, Sky Temple, the second largest map in the whole game, so you're going to get a lot of value out of that global while you can side soak, burrow in. And the difference between a good Tahaka player and a great Tahaka player, can he hit the tongue? So if he yep. is able to hit that drag, you can get a lot of value out of that. So are we going to see sustained Tahaka or speed demon Tahaka? I think it depends on what choices uh, Massive Whiff, I'm sorry, Rush B makes. Sticking with the Kael'thas, the Kael'thas player was very good last game. And taking the Johanna as maybe a soft denial coming out as well. If Johanna's their secondary tank, you figure Massive Whiff is taking it here. Instead, Rush B has denied it, so it will be interesting to see who Massive Whiff turns to to be their primary tank. Yeah, but I think the guy who plays ETC and Johanna also plays their Dahaka. So I'm not, so I'm not sure if that is a denial. I mean, I think that's what I agree. That's what they're trying to do, but I don't think that's a, that's a denial in the sense that that's what they were hoping for. All right, uh, interesting. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't see Dahaka on his list. Stitches is on there though. Do they go to Stitches? So once again, massive whiff going deep into the time pool here for their two picks. Maybe the Johanna did throw them a little bit of a curveball. Debating who they want to take here. I mean, you almost... You almost... Instead, they go Stukov Tracer. Interesting. So Stukov was denied last game. Now they go with the Tracer. I think that forces you... Does that force you into a Bar Varian ban if you're Massive Whiff to keep Varian away from Rush B? I kind of feel like it should. Like, that will be a huge detriment to Tracer's health. I'm actually really surprised by the Stukov. I don't know. I was expecting Malfurion. He would have paired amazingly with the Haka's tongue. And Tracer. You know, Malfurion yeah. uh, Tracer was the uh, kind of HGC kind of combo that was so um, prevalent in the first part of this season. So uh, Malfurion Tracer is so good. Because Malfurion can heal Tracer from a mile away. If he's got the Q on her, he can spam the W on the enemy members and keep Tracer healed up kind of nowhere no matter where she is uh, Stukov yeah. has no such luxury like I mean I I'm even trying to think for this for this map I guess I mean I don't really feel like Stukov's silence is that amazing that you kind of feel the need to pick him so quick early on gosh for them so the tank you got a ban Varian you got to I think so. Yeah, I think you have to. The tank choke is is real here. Garrosh banned. ETC banned. Diablo banned. Johanna picked. I mean, where do they go? Do they go into uh, a Nubarak or do they go into an Arthas? Do they go with the uh, the kind of grandfather of heroes tanks and into the steady Eddie Murden? Um. Based on what I see so far, I kind of like the Anubarak if they decide to go that route. But Mirrodin would also be a potential. But I really feel like they have to ban Varian. I'm trying to think of who else could be such a big threat to what they have going so far. Alex Straza, good sir, is your answer to that. I don't, I don't agree with that. So I feel let's... like they feared her from the last game too much. And maybe so. I mean, these are longer fights. Alex Straza was very good. Um, but now let's see if our caster crystal ball was correct. Will the Varian come out for Rush B? Let's see, let's see. They got Varian. Do they go support now? They might as well. Do they go tr uh, Brightwing? They could go Brightwing for the poly. Could also go Uther for the point and click stun on the yeah, backside. Yeah, 
Um, depends on who they go for their second damage dealer. Like an Uther Greymane would go together really nicely here. Go like Uther Greymane Varian. Uh, Phoenix also still on the board, although he has some... He, if you pick Phoenix, you have to pick Varian due to the bug on Phoenix. Because the bug on Phoenix means that any mm. of the shield talents will wreck him. And instead yep, they stick Varian. with the Lunara. Uh, so there's the Varian, as we predicted. That's there to hold Tracer at bay. She's going to have to play so much more conservative uh, with a Varian on the side of Rush B and last two picks for Massive Whiff. Let's see here. Do we? Do they think? Let's see, do they go Mirrodin or do they go um, New Barak on their tank? Or do they think they go other? You know, I don't know. Anubarak uh, did lose his spell armor today. Um, the scuttlebutt I've heard, is he's, he's squishy right now, that there's the concern about that. So um, Yeah, but what I'm looking at is Lenara and Kael'thas are squishy-ish backliners. With the Tracer and the Haka, with, and if they use Anubarak to get back there, that might be a good way to disrupt and just delete Kael'thas and Lenara. Yeah, sure. You have Dahaka burrow into the back line. If he hits a tongue, a noob can follow up on the stun. Tracer can go in. High degree of execution there, but it certainly can be done. And instead, we get Abathur Leoric. So Leoric. the Abahat on the Tracer uh, with basically no back line. Stukov is the only back line. They say, tank, we don't need no Steakin tank. We got double bruiser here. Yeah. I... Uh, I like the ambition, and I've seen it run before. Basically, Stukov is the only hero that needs protection, so that front line is, you know, less important. I guess. I think it's got to be Uther or Brightwing. You know, the Brightwing would have the uh, Emerald Wind as well as a nice disengage out of this. Yeah, they also need some kind of global because... Massive Whip has and now Abathur and Dahaka. That's a good they're point be, as they're well. They're going to be really hard to uh, keep up and soak. On the flip side of this, though, I, I think it's going to be really hard for Massive Whiff to secure kills. Instead, they go Lucio. Interesting. So instead of a global, going with the faster rotations maybe is what they're thinking, and in, in addition to the shield barrier, which is very powerful. I uh, I guess that that does it is one way to keep up with the speeding tracers that you speed yourself with them. I don't know. I feel like I would have liked Brightwing more, but if they're plan on just going in and killing their backline, there's really nothing to stop them, and Lucio makes it easier to do that. So an interesting draft coming out by Massive Whiff. Uh, it's definitely creative. Um, and it, it's in line with what I've seen in the NGF, NGS playoffs this season, which is teams are not afraid to try different things um, and kind of whip out different strategies. And I've seen it pay off big in a couple of instances. We will see if it pays off big for the side of massive whiff. So which uh, comp do you prefer? prefer in this particular matchup um i mean with what we saw in game one the the comp of massive whiff is simply harder to pull off um and i don't know if they'll be able to do it against rush b who just looked so strong yeah um the only thing i will say though is I feel like Rush Bees could has could have potential um, issues trying to keep up with XP, and if Massive Whiff can utilize that really effectively, they could end up getting a good XP lead and just trying to fight on the shrines and not shrines but the uh, tower sections and try to win that way. So All I don't right, think they're gonna win team fights. So game two will be underway here. E, the blue team, Massive Whiff, fighting to stay alive here in the semifinals. We have Zane KT on Abathur, Zanzibar on Leoric, Ruben Ripper on Stukov, K Shizzle on Dahaka, and Kaina on Tracer. 
And for Rush B, we have Dominator again on Lenara, Green Wall on Lucio, T Lane on Varian, Great Puto on Kael'thas, and Fatlock on Johanna. Some roll swaps here coming out uh, for Rush B. Uh, great Potu, we're going to have to ask him how to pronounce that. <laughs> um, went from Alex Straza to Kael'thas. The Kael'thas player went on to Varian. So moving it around here, showing some flexibility by Rush B. And they've begun the rotations. And Lenara again solo laning in the top, this time against Leoric. They must feel really comfortable with Lenara as their solo laner. Well, her poke is good, and if she plays well, she can stay safe. I think in the early game, Leoric is going to lose that. However, after four, assuming he takes Neil Peasants, I do think Leoric will start to win that lane. He'll just clear too fast for Lunara to be able to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. And the Man, rotations so far by Rush B are pretty much on point. I was You took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say these rotations are absolutely crisp. Uh, Johanna Kael'thas will insta-gib these lanes, and uh, Massive Whiff does not have a way to deal with it. Uh, aggressive rotation, do they sniff out? They're going to invade the siege camp. I love this call with an ABBA on the side of Massive Whiff. Uh, they just don't have the bodies to contest this. This is going to be a three-on-four. They'll force Stukov off of the silence, and there's no way Massive Whiff is going to come in here and take this. Uh, no. Nope. You know, Rush B just basically went in there and took their lunch money and left. <laughs> so you can see Lunara is winning the poke battle on top. Uh, we'll have to check in after four. I am curious after yeah. four how that lane turns. But early game once again to Rush B. Uh, hats off to Massive Whiff, though, kind of knowing their early game limitations and just safely soaking and not really worried about it or trying to force anything here. And they have regained the XP lead after losing it very briefly, so their soaking strategy is working so far, at least in that regard. And Leoric actually went Ocean Renewal at one. I personally, yeah, I saw that. I like the cooldown reduction and heal on the Q myself. Um, and I'm with you, and I agree on that. Yeah, the cooldown reduction is is the is the, I mean the heal is great, but the cooldown reduction in particular is yep. really good especially in this particular comp leo's gonna kind of function as like a pseudo main tank um, there's always going to be somebody in range of that q and having that extra slow is going to be very valuable tracer going untouchable Ooh, brave leaving it all on the table with what is absolutely 100 percent i'm going to say 99.9 .9%, going to be a taunt varian Taking Untouchable into that is uh, very oh. ambitious. He already went Taunt. Did he? Okay, yeah. So 100% going to be a Taunt Varian. And Leoric still has not picked his level 4. There it is. And he does Paralyzing, paralyzing sl Yeah. I, hmm. Then why didn't you go the reduction at 1? I agree. I, I was going to say the same thing. The, the reduction at 1 is going to allow you to proc that slow even more <sighs> we'll see how it pans out so teams opting to split the temples no advantage gained lunara is running down to the bottom lane to counteract the abba soak a little skirmish here over the vision i think this is pretty smart by rush b as well they know that they can't try to win both shrines and maintain xp uh, soak so they're just trying to concentrate on just getting the one. And th this game really is 100% going to come down to how well Massive Whiff leverages their global advantage and the Abahat, and how well there's the taunt and a last-minute recall that puts her in exactly the same spot was <laughs> just enough to allow her to queue away safely. Um, but to finish my thought, how well Rush B plays around the cooldown on Ultimate Evolution. Yep. Unless, do you think they're crazy enough? No. I do not. That'd be I, really going all in on Siege. On the global thing, yeah. But if you're going to go all in on like a push build ABBA, why the Tracer? Like. Yeah, no. You kind of have to. You need two Tracers. I assume that's the plan. Yeah, I mean, right. 
I, yeah, I would assume, unless you wanted, like, double Leoric, I, I guess. I don't... It's got to be two Tracers. I mean, Varian can only taunt one of them, right? Right. So, top lane, though, Massive Whiff took their lunch money right back and just demolished top fort with really no contest from the side of Rush B. Rush B responding appropriately and putting four-man pressure in the bot lane. Tongue goes on to Varian. Uh, he will use his parry to eat a number of those shots. Then a charge, taunt, stun. Rush B, however, knows the rotation is coming and wisely withdraws. And let's see. No longer drain momentum for Leoric. I'm fascinated by this build. I don't know how I feel about it. You know, Leoric, I don't. The Leoric build. So I far. think all. I don't particularly care for the one and the four, especially the one. But I think all of his level seven talents have a place. Um, I could see why, you know, like, especially if Tahaka goes movement speed and you have Tracer. Lior kind of needs to keep up with those guys. If he's being all lumbering in the back, maybe that's the reason uh, Lior is thinking the move speed for that. I got to keep up with my boys. Ultimate evolution was taken. Of course, uh, Rush B withdrawing with tens coming. It is going to be is that flailing swipe? I always forget Stukov. Yeah, flailing swipe. Yeah, flailing swipe. Isolation. Swipe. Ultimate evolution, which was just used to very little value. I believe that's pull a quantum spike. And March of the Black King, no Tomb coming out for Leoric. I actually do like the March. They're, I think they're both fine. Um, but uh, let's, let's see how much value they get out of it. Tens here. Once again, Thornwood Vine, Sound Barrier. It is Shield Wall coming out for Varian, Phoenix, and Blessed Shield by Johanna. Speaking of Sound Barrier, there it goes. That was an excellent uh, silence by Ruben Ripper. It really did a lot of work on Rush B. However... His team has to withdraw, and Massive Whiff can't stay here with Ultimate Evolution down. You just can't no. do that. Tahaka needs to be going and pushing in another lane. Um, and this is the the point we brought up. You you have to play around uh, both teams, actually. I brought it up for Rush B. But Massive but Whiff... look how far the Abathur is up there. Yep. He uh, pushed that lane out, and then Tahaka took over for him. They're a tag Can team get... in there in the top lane. Yeah, see, so I feel like... They are doing a really good job on that part of the strategy, which is just keeping up the, up the XP lead and pushing out the lanes. Yeah, I agree. I, I just, I, I, I just think they were a little late on the rotation. They kind of putzed around in the bottom lane a little bit without really much purpose. It felt like they could have gotten more pressure on the map a little faster, you know, maybe 10, 15 seconds or so with not mm -hmm. much accomplished in the bot lane by massive whiff there. Now here comes Varian. Tracer, she has to play so, so careful uh, with Untouchable. And and you actually, we didn't talk about this, but Mule is going to get a lot of value. Uh, Rush B has to finish these structures. Lunara, Dominator in the top lane, able to get a solo kill on the Zanzibar. And now running from Tracer, who's hovering in the neighborhood. Again, that's showing great when map awareness by Rush B. They get the kill and immediately just bail out. They don't try to push it in any longer, any further. Yeah, look at the value with the uh, the um, the mule though. You know that mid fort was significantly lower. Now it's back up. So something Rush B needs to keep in mind. They need to finish structures. They can't just leave them there to heal up. And an ambitious boss boss call. Everybody is up. Everybody has their R buttons, and a Massive Whiff knows that this is going on. March of the Black King could be huge directly onto the point. I don't think they can just give this boss now. They've already eaten half of it health. Oh, Tracer eating the boss done. There goes Sound Barrier. Phoenix going down to zone, and it is going to be Johanna that goes down. I was waiting for it, and uh, this is really... The first big flailing swipe to secure the boss. Well played. The living bomb, though, is it going to eliminate the we'll untouchable tracer. stacks? And it does. So a brilliant counter engage by Rush B to pick up two kills on the backside and the all-important tracer kill. The boss does go to massive whiff, as does the initial kills. But this is the closest thing we've seen to a victory in either one of these maps so far for massive whiff. Well, I mean, look at Massive Whip. They took out the towers in the top lane during that boss. Yep, yep, for sure. And the tra the uh, kills were even, and they secured the boss. So 
Um, I mean, you can look at the map. There is just a ton of pressure um, on the side. There goes uh, March of the Black King to try to sustain Zanzibar. Will go down there. I loved what he was doing until the, about the last 15 seconds of that. That was a uh, kind of an unnecessary death. Um, even yeah, if you I think are, he realized he yeah, was going to die at some point. For sure, he should have pulled out of there about 10 seconds ago, and he would have been gravy. Um, even when you are Leoric, though, you don't want to give up free kills. Nope. So trading of the temples here. Uh, massive whiff staying down here with a three on... F actually, I suppose three on three. Lunara mid to Haka top. Lunara is being forced into lane maintenance duty. Uh, janitor, if you will. A great silence by Stukov. Phoenix goes down. Oh, Lucio, Lucio is in a lot of trouble. First to go. Uh, Got to be careful of those living bombs. Johanna's in trouble too. Dominator does arrive and just unloads onto Tracer. The Abahat arrives just in time to save the Tracer. Or Barely. did it? Did no! Know? The shield ended too early. I bet you Dominator hit that W button to extend the poison and pick up the very delayed kill, resetting those untouchable stacks one more time. Oh, that was a crazy team fight. Yeah, but uh, Massive Whiff showing big signs of life this game. This game is very, very even. Uh, kills more on the side of Rush B, uh, but the map pressure and globals combined with the AVA, uh, they're leveraging those globals and that macro into uh, into an even game, offsetting those deaths. Yeah, and they're, they're doing a really good job of making sure they always are pr pushed in. Now... I think some like there's some of their team fighting could be a little bit tighter, particularly that last one at the bottom. I feel like I felt like they were gonna win that outright, and then Rush B was able to stop and counter to get back into it. Yeah, Lunara rode in like the cavalry at the last minute and and just literally unloaded everything onto Tracer, um, and that that ended that ended up with the Tracer kill there. But like, see, look, top Abathur is just pushing for free this whole game. Yeah, and, and that, there's and, no one to stop them. Yeah, that's why Massive Whiff is still in this, is because of that offlane soaking. So uh, a little bit of a lull here, as both teams have their 16s. They're kind of waiting for the objective. You imagine Massive Whiff is going to come up here and grab the Bruiser Camp. Yeah, and Dahaka better... Be careful. I think he just burrowed so he won't have it for a little bit longer. Now, a huge invade by Rush B. They hit the mines. They know this is coming. Leoric moves over to zone them away. Flailing uh, swipe for the disengage. Go down? He does have uh, March the Black King. However, it does very little healing because it hit very few. A tongue onto Varian. I think both sides are going to be able to walk away from this. Tracer goes hard onto Varian. He does eat the Pulse Bomb. Protect wasn't up, and now both teams slowly rotating away. Um, small advantage in that fight to Massive Whiff as Evolution and Isolation were not used. Yeah, and I felt like they used a lot of cooldowns for Rush B in that fight, not getting any value from it. Now, Ooh, Lunara is getting double to him. Yeah, Varian was hit with the isolation, so he wasn't there to peel for Lunara. He just came out of that a second ago, making his presence felt. Massive Whiff needs to be very careful about those living bombs, and it's actually the Shrine Guardians on the backside that take out Tracer. Stukov finishes up Varian. Lucio in a lot of trouble. I don't think Leo's going to be able to finish the job, even with an Abba hat. So two well, for one. Top keep right now with the push, and then Lunara has to go clean it up. Yeah, so two for one in favor of Rush B. Although Lucio, that Abba hat on the Dahaka is doing good stuff. Dahaka needs to run away there, and he does yeah. go down. Stukov also running for his life. Flailing Swipe keeps everybody away except for the unstoppable Johanna. You know, I liked what they did there, but they overstayed again. You know, Leveraging two of those kills for that keep might be worth it, but losing everybody for it, certainly not. Yeah, and it's a reminder of like what happened last game in Infernal Shrine. So they just kind of went all in and to, to get it, to get the shrine or get the uh, point, and it's not just not worth it overall. Yeah, you know, early game, you can do more of that. You can trade kills for map pressure, but the later the game goes on, the longer these death timers get, uh, the harder and harder it is to trade 
uh, kills for map pressure. All right, do they get a keep here with this? Especially if they get another kill. I mean, this is a minute 15 boss. This thing's going to have some bunt punch. They're going to double up with the siege giants. Um, so I think the play here, if you're massive whiff, is um, you figure you're going to lose keep. I think you send a Haka to the top lane and trade keeps. If you're going to lose one, you may as well make them lose one. Yep. But Lenara already went back to clear it, so they won't be getting top keep. You know, maybe I stand corrected. This boss is going down pretty fast. Oh, yeah. A nice silence by Ruben Ripper on the Stukov. Boss at about half health. Phoenix doing a lot of work and living bomb being spread um, a little too liberally. Phoenix has ended. Rushby pushing in hard with the boss and the Siege Giants. Uh, this is going to be close. Johanna Ooh, actually... Tracer. Yeah, she actually pulled Tracer into the boss stun. But they weren't able to finish her. Boss goes down. Keep still up. If the keep stays up, this is a huge deal as they have the mule, yeah. keep in mind. And the mule's already really, been deployed. I was going to say, this might be a time when you uh, they might have to die for that a little bit. So, or get, uh, I guess you get this. Is you going to shoot the bottom one first? I forget where it shoots first. Yeah, the bottom one will shoot bottom. Um, so that was a pretty nice defense there for the side of Massive Whiff. Uh, it's not. It's going to be all for naught, though. His 20s have been picked up by Rush B. Both sides but trading shots, temples. Extra shots were needed, so that does help a little bit in a sense. Yeah, I probably soaked an extra maybe two shots if I were to guess, something like that. Johanna staying on the bottom point. The rest of the members of Rush B are rotating up. Uh, Evolution is available, so they could make this into a 5-on-4. The taunt onto, Ver onto a Tracer, I should say. She does blink away and cleanse the poison. However, she is in a lot of trouble. Abahat on the Tracer. Dahaka, in the meantime, eating a lot of damage, too. March of the Black King gets a ton of value with that, that usage there. Um, however, Kaina, once again, eating the poison damage. Stukov does pass the healing passage into her. Massive whiff is going to have to withdraw. Yeah, but it looks like they're going to lose a couple people in the process, including Stukov as well. This, this could be the game. This right is a here. core call here. You go bottom lane, you have Siege Giants down there already. Um, or maybe you just burn through this mid, mid keep. It's already pretty close to dead. Uh, you got to go bottom. Just, yep. You already have Siege Giants back down there. Just end it. So, uh, once again, Rush B on the core, looking to end. Uh, Giants are here. Mid-keep has fallen 30 seconds before the rest of the members of Massive Whiff will be up. And it looks like the number three seed on the verge of taking out the number two seed. 25%, 10%. And that is game two over to the side of Rush B, taking the series 2-0 and advancing to the C West Finals. And they did it in fairly convincing fashion. Like like I said at the beginning, like, I feel like this team is cons consistent, or not consistently, that's a problem, but they look like one of the best teams in the division all season just consistency wise they're not able to always do that and it looks like tonight they were able to do that hmm i am winging out right now i lost connection briefly and now cartography stopped working that was really bizarre okay let's see if Hey, okay. there we go. <laughs> all right guys sorry for the lack of the post game stats uh we had a little bit of a uh, Blizznet Battle.net wig out there. Let's see if we can get uh, Dominator or one of the other members of Rush B into uh, into the lobby here for an interview. Yeah, I mean, Rush B looked great. They showed why they haven't been dominated this season. They had five wins and six draws. So uh, that that screams to me what you were saying, just situations where they weren't quite able to uh, to put teams away, maybe. But, yeah, and they like I like both of their comps in the end tonight. Like, even that Lucio, 
which I thought looked a little weird at first, but watching how they utilized him, they knew exactly how they wanted to do that, and they like just used it to bully Massive Whiff the entire game. It was really well played by them. I really like the Alex Straza from the first game too. Like I just love her on particular on Infernal Shrines, but they like you said earlier, they she they picked they knew when to use Dragon Queen. Like they use it basically perfectly the entire game. Yeah, that's uh -huh. always a hard thing to do. A hundred percent agree. Um, and you know, Massive Whiff had an excellent season. Um, I think those games were much more of a reflection of how well Rush B played um, more than anything else. And you know, it 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 takes a lot of guts to try something so kind of different in that game too with such a non-traditional comp um but massive whiff just kind of letting it all hang out and no cards left on the table and they had some moments in game two game two was much closer than game one was they just it seemed like every moment they had was never completely theirs rushby was always able to take something back on a re-engage so they just never had these team fights or these moments that were all theirs and joining us now, we have Dominator and please say your name. We've been debating on how to pronounce it all cast long. It is pronounced the Great Putu. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, I agree. <laughs> so Dominator and the Great Putu from the victorious Rush B team, in my opinion, the team with the best logo maybe in all of NGS. Going to the C West Finals. How are you guys feeling? We are feeling solid. I think we've really cleaned up our gameplay all throughout the regular season. And now that it's playoff time, we're ready to kick some booty. Absolutely. Well, it, you showed it there. I mean, Massive Whiff, we were just talking about it, had really had a stellar season. Um, but you guys really controlled, especially Game 1, Game 2 a little closer, really controlled... Uh, game one, what do you think the key was to uh, to winning those so decisively? I think that... Oh, do you want to take it? No, you take I was going to say you take it. Um, honestly, I think it was just good teamwork and communication skills. Um, we really looked into what their team was strong at and what they were better than us, and our personal opinion was, and we just tried to draft to mitigate that and capitalize on our strengths. And, you know, I think just being aware of where their positioning was and what they were doing at all times really helped us capitalize on a lot of plays that could have gone wrong. In that game, too, Massive Whiff came out of that draft with a uh, certainly non-traditional comp. Um, what was the uh, chatter like in comms at the end of that draft? What were you guys thinking about how to deal with the global and kind of the weird draft they brought out that if you didn't handle it right could have been troublesome hmm. and are you referring to the abathur right well the abathur and the leo no real tank in the front kind of a tracer okay. double thing going on it was just it was kind of an unusual creative comp um i think the biggest thing is that um that's kind of a generic answer but we did basically stick to our strengths we uh we do have good macro um, and we were just doing a lot of that. A lot of it was looking at where they're popping up and just immediately sending someone uh, back there to go do. I think that was where we shined. And I think that's why we, we did so well against that weird comp. In terms of the chatter, I don't really think it was anything different. It was kind of like an O. Uh, I would like to say that I did call the Abby pick. <laughs> I always tend to do that. Um, but regardless of that, the chatter was about the same. Uh, just sticking to our strengths and going from there. Linehouse, I'll pass it to you. For your first game, I assume your whole strategy was to just completely body them on the objective and not really worry about anything else on the map. Was that kind of like the initial the plan with the composition in general, or was there more to it than just that? Um, I think with that team composition, we were definitely looking to team fight um, and capitalize on the fact that they didn't have a whole lot of dive until I think their last like three picks. And at that point, we 
had picked up the Tyrael and we said, okay, if they want to dive us, um, you know, we'll deal with that and we'll just counter push right back into you guys. So, is the, the, the Lonara player here? I don't remember who's in here. Yeah, yes. I put All right, I have a question. Okay, you don't like leaping, you don't like leap and strike. Um, I, you know, I think leaping strike is very difficult to use properly. Um, you put yourself in a lot of danger going and uh, leaping in over someone. Um, there is definitely a place for it. Um, in that team composition, I personally just preferred to go the uh, Thornwood Bind. Actually, so that, that was going to be my question. So what was it that you saw? Was it your team composition or the opponent's team composition that made you decide that Thornwood Vine was better? Because I think you picked it both games, right? Yeah, it was definitely their team composition. Um, if you look at the first game, they had opened up with a Gul'dan pick, and automatically you know, okay, they're going to be trying to protect the back line. So either you get there by forcing your way in or poking your way in. And the more consistent way and the safer way is to poke in. So... And I, I think that also applies to the second game to some extent. Um, they had a lot of backline people that we needed to get to, and that was a good way to deal with it. All right, so who are you, who are you guys facing next week? Guys Jam or Team Awesome Sauce? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, personally, I would love to face Guys Gems again. Uh, what about you, Putu? Yeah, I think Guy Gems would be a good one again. Were they top of the division when we faced them? Was that them, or was that the other guys? I think that was like that one week where Team Awesome Sauce was number one. Oh, okay. Well, regardless, I would like to face Guy Gems again. I think that was a, a pretty... I'm, my memory's a little hazy, but that was a really interesting uh, comp that I'd love to jump back into and see what we can do against. Because like Dominator has said, we have improved substantially, and I would love to see if that improvements, you know, carry over into this game. Cool. That's all I got, Mongoose. Yeah, that's all for me. Uh, congratulations, guys. Uh, that game we're talking about, Guys Gems, Team Awesome Sauce, uh, will be tomorrow night on Swing's Twitch, twitch.tv slash swing time. If you want to see how the rest of this division C West plays out, I'm sure these guys will be in there watching it. Uh, any shout outs from you guys before we let you go? I know I would like to thank my parents, uh, friends, everybody who's watching right now. Um, I would definitely like to thank the other team for putting up one hell of a game and one hell of a match. Definitely the second one. Um, I got a shout out to all of the people that played. Uh, we did a very fantastic job of overall, just the anchoring. Um, I specifically have to shout out to the material we had, the sanctification. I think that helped us a lot. Um, I also want to give a shout out to our six man who is not here because he tried to play D&D &D tonight but did not work out. Um, <laughs> he's still watching and we appreciate it and we're looking forward to what he's able to see from a, see from a uh, third person view. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Okay, I lied. I do have one more question for Putu. <laughs> so IDK Shrubs, is that your guys' guy or just somebody that's cheering you on? Yeah, that's yeah. the guy cheering us okay. on. Okay, so he said that a Great Putu is a bird from South America. Is the bird from South America that is the Great Putu, is that your Discord avatar picture right there? Yes, yes it is. All right. The Muppet <laughs> is, yes. All right, now the rest of the cast doesn't matter. I'm glad we got that sorted out in a medium <laughs> that nobody but us can see. All right, guys, wow. congratulations again. Uh, thanks to Linehouse for joining us while he is on Death's Door, making sure the show goes on and I am not here by my lonesome Linehouse. Any shout-outs before we, um, well, before I go play some video games? Uh, I'm, my article is probably going to be tomorrow, I'm hoping. And uh, I, I feel bad because I was going to predict Massive Whiff. I'm just going to be honest about it. But... Uh, <laughs> I will say, Rush B, you guys look really good, and so you have me thinking about who we'll be picking next week for sure. But uh, uh, well, to be honest with you, back um, definitely going into the playoffs when you had us losing in week one, that was definitely a big motivator. And you're you're us welcome. Just then. Prove our worth. Your bulletin board material, Linehouse. Look at you. You're welcome, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so that'd be twice then I would have been wrong. So. But other than that, preview one, uh, preview one going forward too. 
Hey, I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, uh, there's a good chance I'm picking you next week because what I've seen this this week and against arrogant Nephilim, I have a hard time. I don't know at this point though. I gotta see who. And then I, watch as we lose. <laughs> <laughs> that's how. That's how you know I'm cursed at that point. Yep. Uh, other than that, I don't really have any shoutouts. But thanks for letting me join you again, Mongo. I actually am supposed to be joining uh, Swing and Weenus in tomorrow's pot. Uh, Ooh, we'll try cast. Well. Well, it's not try. I believe we're trying a couch analyst in between matches. I think it's between oh. me and Cersei. That's my understanding. But oh, yeah. We'll they were talking about that in the Discord. We'll see how that goes. That's a great idea. NGS production creativity here. Yeah, it sounds like super complicated that who the hell knows what will work <laughs> or not. But hey. I want to say congrats to Rush B one more time. You guys looked amazing tonight. And uh, good luck going forward in the season. And thanks again, Mongoose, for having me. I appreciate it. Linehouse, always welcome. Our Twitters are on there. Linehouse and Mongoose underscore underscore two underscores because there are imposters out there. Mongoose underscore underscore 22. Uh, be sure to check out the Div C West semifinal tomorrow night, twitch.tv slash swing time. I will be back Sunday night at 730 for the Div B West last semifinal. Uh, it will be uh, Team Showboat versus... Oh, I should have this up. Hold on. Is it defined? Oh, versus Obscured. Winner going on into the Div B West finals and Div B West in both mine houses and I completely unbiased opinion has been one of the best divisions to watch this season. So definitely come check that out. Uh, everybody have a wonderful night and we'll see you back here Sunday.